Hey, how's it going? And today we're going to talk about the output function on the Blueprint interface. To get started with this, I'm just going to show you. To start this, I'd like to just give you an analogy based on my understanding of it. So we're going to have a sending Blueprint and a receiving Blueprint. The first case that we're going to illustrate is the sending, this one. The sending Blueprint is going to make an eventful call and going to send the ingredients. The receiving Blueprint is going to get the call, do whatever, bake the bread, and send nothing back. And this is the first scenario that we're going to illustrate. What we're going to do is to use our Baker analogy. I'm going to go ahead and create the blueprint interface, which is our channel of communication. I'm just going to leave it called. Basically, I'm just going to call this to stay with our baking example. <laughs> Baker message. Okay. And then we're going to go save and close. And all this is, is you can think of this as a channel of communication. Let's just do it this way. Let's send a text and we'll make this, and I'll just call this Baker message. Oh, I didn't spell that right. I, I want to be grammatically correct there. Okay. So now we'll compile and save. So that's that. So we're going to get ready to get a message. So we need to create a blueprint to receive the message. So we're just going to create a blueprint real fast here. And I'm just going to call this Baker. And we'll just double click in this. And then we'll just create a cube to represent this. Now, since we're on the receiving end of the interface, the blueprint interface, we need to implement it. So we go to class settings and we're just going to go add new interface and just keep in the back of your mind that our function is called i believe baker message so there that's done and then we're going to need it to do something so so in here we can go into the event graph so we're all linked up and you see this here where it says baker message now watch what happens when i click on it it pops up an event so this is what i i'm saying about an eventful message so we get an eventful message and all we're going to do is print a string based on this. So we'll just go print string and then we're just going to plug in whatever the message is going to be. To complete the receiving side of everything, we've created the interface. We've created a input for a message. We have our Baker blueprint. All we have to do is make sure we drag an instance of it into the scene. And so the receiving end of the interface is completely connected. Now all we have to do is complete the sender in. So to do that, we'll just go into the first person blueprint and we'll just trigger this off a keyboard and we'll go keyboard one. So then I'm gonna zoom in here. One way or another, there's different ways to do this, establish a connection to the Baker blueprint. So I'm gonna do that by get actor of class and I'll just search for Baker. And there it is right there. And now we're all linked up and I have access to its internal workings. So now I can just search for, I believe it's Baker message right here and where it's a call function. So I can just link up here and now I can just type in a message is I am sending the ingredients, bake the bread. <laughs> I could make a variable for that, but I'm just going to do it that way. Okay, and now I just close this. And if I come into here, you'll see if I hit one, I am getting the message to bake the bread. So that's that. And this is all done now on the Blueprint interface here. Click here with an input here. So this is our channel of communication. Everything's working fine. It's a one way street. As you notice, the arrows don't go back the other way. This is strictly from the blueprint first person to the baker, bake my bread. Sorry, made an eventful call. I'm sending the ingredients. In this case, the ingredients is the message itself, but there could be a list of other data sent. And then the receiving blueprints gets the call. And then once they got the message, they can do whatever they want. But I'm sending nothing back to the sending blueprint. This is just a one-way street. So now what happens when we add an output to this? What happens if we add an output to this? Well, the best analogy I have for this, it's like having kids. Everything changes. <laughs> so what's what happens? So we're going to go ahead here and let's go ahead and add a text variable here. And I just call this result. Sometimes this is better with using a math 
example because you can show that it's changed easier. But now watch what's happened. So if we come back into the, the baker, we already get a warning. Day one. <laughs> And it's saying conflicted with K2 node. All we did was add an output. We didn't change anything else. But watch, if we go into our game and I press one, the communication is broken. In fact, it just crashed. <laughs> so it really didn't like that at all. Obviously we're doing something, things go awry once you do that. So now we have an output on here. So what's happened? So come in here. We're going to delete this because obviously that's trouble. And I'll delete that. Now look over here. If we come to Baker message, like I said, everything's changed now by just formatting the input. We double click on this. And what's happened now? Well, now we're in a whole nother realm. Now we're not on just a receiving message one way. Now it's, I'm still within the Baker blueprint, but now it wants me to create a function. So it wants me to create a function. I don't have a function I can think of to put in here, but if I did, I could. So the Baker could send me a message like bake my bread. And let's say I'm going to put in a result in here and said, here's your darn bread. Hope you enjoy it. So I modified <laughs> the message, right? So now everything's changed, just like in the diagram here. It's not, you just, here's the stuff, you do it. No, I don't get a call anymore. I'm going to do something to your bread, and then I'm going to send it back to you. That's what this is about now. Now, this is about one blueprint being able to access the internal function of another blueprint and then getting that result back. So if we come into, let's just close out of all that. Let's come into the blueprint first person and see what the heck's going on now. Well, what is going on? Where is my print string here? I don't know. Let's just do this. So keyboard event one. Maybe I lost that in the crash. I don't know. So anyway, I can search now. I think, can I search now for call? What was it called? It was called, I already forgot the name of the, the function, Baker message. So do I even have access to the Baker message in here now? Let's look and see. Baker message. So just here, same as before. And I don't think it's, this is going to help us going through the interface. So we got to go back to doing our other way of get actor from class, actor of class, excuse me. And we're going to click on here and go, it's Baker. And so we'll cl plug in here. And now I can type in Baker. And this is what we want here. And so it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what my message is because the Baker is going to mess it up. It's the Baker blueprint's going to write over it. So I'll go print string. And we'll plug this in here. And now if I compile and save and go in and I hit play, it looks like something happened during that crash. It looks like I lost the instance. So I'm gonna drag this back on there. So now if I come in here and I press one, here's your bread. <laughs> so I hope you see why this could be confusing to understand. This just helped me a little bit in understanding that when you add the output function, you're basically changing it from one blueprint sending data to I'm sending data, I can still send data, but it's not on an eventful call and you're gonna just, I can get that data back after you've messed with it. So it's almost like when would you use the output function? I don't know in the case when you'd wanna be able to access the internal function on another blueprint, that's when you'd use it. I can't think of a case right now that I need that functionality for, but that's what you'd use it for. So anyway, I hope you found this helpful. Take care, have a great day, and I'll talk to you next time.